Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to give it a minute and just let uh, more of our participants join um, and get settled. But in the meantime, if you're here, we would love to know your name, what organization you're representing today. Um, and then we will start in about one minute. Great, thank you for sending those through. We love seeing who you guys are and where you're coming from. Um, so welcome to the Give Local NRV webinar that's all about strategy today. Uh, my name is Sarah. I'm gonna be leading you through today's presentation. Just a few quick housekeeping items to note before we get started. I wanna let you know that our webinar is gonna be recorded um, and it'll be put into the toolkit on the Give Local NRV site under the resources tab. Um, and then, of course, if you have any questions while we're going through the slides, um, you can just click the little Q&A button on your screen and you can send those through and we'll get through um, as many as we can at the end. Um, so again, I'm Sarah. I'm with Mighty Cause. Uh, we're the platform provider for Give Local NRV. We also have Jess. Um, we're going to have Laura on and Lindsay joining us today from the Community Foundation of the New River Valley. Um, I'm going to switch the slide. Uh, so I'll pass it over to you, Jess, so you can say a few words. Yeah, so um, good afternoon, everybody, and thank you so much for being here and, of course, for participating in Give Local NRV. Um, so I'm, as I'm looking at the list of participants, I know several of you have been a part of this in the past, um, but I appreciate you taking the time just to get the refresh today. Um, for those, obviously, who are new to Give Local this year, this is our online giving platform. Um, that we host in partnership with Mighty Cause. And um, we use it year round, but of course we focus most of our energy on the giving day we hold each June. So our ninth annual giving day is coming up on June 22nd. And um, as you'll hear about today, there are lots of different ways to utilize the platform in order to really make the most of the giving day as well as the early giving period. And we'll talk about that today as well. Um, and I did um, just want to let folks know we had teased it in some of the um, communications we sent out that we are back at full staff capacity at the foundation and super excited about that. So Lindsay Gleason, you see her lovely picture here, um, is joining our team as assistant director. She officially starts on Monday, so, um, so given a little bit of time today to us. Um, and she will be spearheading Give Local going forward. And of course, me and Laura um, will be uh, continuing to help this year as she gets used to the system and the platform. So all of us, um, in addition to Mighty Cause, are good resources for you. So lots of good stuff to go through today. And just like Sarah said, um, please put your questions in throughout so we can um, answer those at the end and just give good guidance to make the most out of this year's Giving Day. And I'll turn it back to you, Sarah. Cool. Well, we are super excited to be here with you all for Give Local NRV this year. Um, if you're new to the Mighty Cause platform, uh, just a little bit about who we are. We are uh, a fully functional organization fundraising suite. Organizations can use every day of the year to raise money for your causes. Um, we've been around since 2006, so a long time. We were one of the first platforms to host Giving Days, um, and we're just super excited for the ninth year for Give Local. So here is a look at today's agenda. We're going to go over some of the basics for the Giving Day. We're going to talk through some of the strategies you can use to help make your campaign a success. We're going to also do a Q&A at the end of the presentation. Um, so send those questions over. And this is a lot of content to cover. So we are also going to have um, the slides available for you. So if you have to jump off a little early, you can come back and see all of the slides, uh, refer back to them in your own time, available in the toolkit. Uh, all right, so I'm going to actually pass it back to you, Jess, so you can go over some of the basics. 
Sure. Um, so, and I'll just, again, um, tell folks to take a look at the nonprofit toolkit on the Give Local NRV page, which is under resources. And that has the first webinar that we did, the recording and slides, which talk a little bit more about the basics. Um, but as I shared with you, this is our online giving platform. This is our ninth year hosting this. Um, and we've held an annual giving day just to be able to raise the profile of all the good work that you all do and um, to make sure that folks know they should be supporting that work with their contributions. So um, we are still accepting uh, registrations and will through May 25th. So any nonprofit um, that serves the New River Valley, that's a 501c3 or a unit of government like a school or a library can um, participate in Give Local. For those of you who may be um, physically located outside the region, we just do ask that at least 25% of your program support um, New River Valley residents. And that's a question we ask during the registration process. Just looking through the list of names that's joining us today, you guys are, are here in the NRV and well within that limit. Um, and one of the many features that we like about Mighty Cause is this ability to do early giving. So the giving day itself is on June 22nd, and that's when um, you'll be able to see the, the leaderboards and how you're faring in, a, um, in comparison to other nonprofits. But prior to the 22nd, anytime between June 1st and the end of the day on June 22nd, folks can contribute to your organization and those contributions will count towards your giving day total and towards the grants and prizes that we're going to talk about. So we really encourage you to use that early giving um, feature because it allows if there's summer travel for folks or folks who just need to be reminded a few more times um, really gives the opportunity to get the message out to folks so that they are um, giving to you as part of the giving day. I think that's all I got, Sarah. Awesome, thank you. Um, okay, so if you're registered, you're ready to go and you're wondering what you wanna do next, um, first you are going to want to customize your organization profile. Um, and if you haven't watched our first webinar, Getting Started, it's available in the toolkit. That one focused all on the nuts and bolts of just how to navigate the entire kind of Mighty Cause platform for you. Um, it has a ton of Getting Started info, how to customize just literally everything, logo, banner, um, your about section. So I don't want to repeat too much here. So do check that out. Um, but once your page is customized and filled out, you're going to want to start to think about your communication strategies for the giving day uh, and just all of the different outlets that are available to you to kind of reach and connect with your donors. So you want to start thinking about the goals you have for your organization um, during Give Local. You want to start thinking about securing matching grants to entice some donors. Uh, you're going to want to start thinking about how to engage your community and supporters of amb ambassadors of your organization. Uh, consider peer-to-peer -peer fundraising if you haven't tried that or if you want to kind of expand your peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So this is just a really great time for you to start thinking, getting creative, and getting excited about your Give Local NRB campaign and how you want to connect with and kind of make your appeal to your donors. Um, so I have register your organization. I won't go through that, but if you um, need to do that, you can do that. Uh, let's see. Give local NRV resources. Um, so just to kind of quickly touch on this, your toolkit has so much available to you. So if you're ever feeling lost or overwhelmed or you don't know kind of what to tackle first, these tools are available to you. Uh, tips, tricks, FAQs, walkthroughs, a ton of support articles. Mighty Cause, we have a huge support article library. So if you're curious, um, there's a link in the toolkit to that. Uh, and this can all kind of help you start to kind of gear your campaign up. So we are going to get into prizes. So Jess, I'm going to pass it back. <laughs> Sure. Um, so, um, as Sarah said, we're gonna we're gonna spend the, most of our time today talking about all of the different tools and resources that are available through the Mighty Cause platform um, to really make the most of the Giving Day. And um, we try to also incentivize some of those and give you a lot of different opportunities to um, promote your organization through the grants and prizes that we offer. So these are also um, now posted to the Give Local NRV website with um, detailed information about what makes you eligible, et cetera. So please do take a look at that. For those who've participated last year, um, these are pretty similar to what we saw last year. 
So um, we are going to award funding to the organizations that have raised the most money. And we have small, medium, and large categories. Um, this is based on your operating budget. So when you register each year for Give Local, we ask you to put in your operating budget. This gives us the opportunity to put a roughly equal number of organizations in each one of these buckets um, so that we're, we don't have a ton of competition in one category and not another. Um, it's not an exact science, but we will email you and explain to you how we go about making the decision and then, of course, what category you are assigned to. The categories um, are also in place for most unique donors. So this is unduplicated individuals that are giving to your organization throughout the course of early giving and on the giving day. And again, there are grants associated with that. Every year we pick um, two superstars, and these are just folks that um, we feel at the Community Foundation have done a really great job of either using the tools that Mighty Cause offers, being really creative with your social media campaign. Um, this is a chance for folks at the foundation, our staff and board, just to recognize folks who, regardless of amount um, raised or number of individuals, really use the platform to its full extent. New this year um, is a grant for early giving. So we really want to promote the ability to um, solicit donations beginning June 1st. So this is going to go to the organization that raises the most money during that early giving period. And early giving again, June 1st until um, 12 a.m. on June 22nd. And then um, a few other things that um, you have a chance to kind of focus on for your giving day strategy. We have these power hour grants, and these are focused on the most unique donors during a certain period of time. We found that um, some strategies that organizations will use is to target one of these power hours where you really want to use your social media email campaigns to um, focus folks in a particular time period. And so it might be a way, particularly if you don't have a huge staff to devote to really focus on one thing. Um, we're also going to talk today about the peer to peer fundraising functionality of Mighty Cause. And this is where you have the ability to engage your board members or volunteers in creating their own sort of mini fundraising page for your organization. Um, we had several organizations last year that used this tool really successfully as a way for their kind of ambassadors to personalize the ask that they made on behalf of your organization. So we've got a grant to incentivize that. And then um, we just got some random prizes too through our golden tickets. And um, this is if someone makes a contribution during this time period, we'll just kind of randomly select um, that donation. And then that gives you some additional funding. So there's a lot of opportunities for you to um, get some additional money in addition to whatever you raise. And we really encourage you to um, use these to their full extent as ways to motivate your donors. So think about ones you may want to go after. Um, use the leaderboards that will be on the Giving Day page to encourage your donors to continue to give so that you can move up those leaderboards over time and see where you stand in relation to others. Um, there's a, just a lot of ways that you can use this um, to your benefit. Um, a couple other things to note is that, um, and this is explained in the guidelines online, but you can't get, your organization cannot get more than one giving day grant with the exception of the power hours. So if you, you can win a power hour and, um, you know, an early giving grant if you want to, but you can't win both most money raised and most unique donors. We want to be able to make this something where a lot of different organizations can um, utilize those incentive grants and prices. But if you do happen to qualify for more than one, you will always be given the larger grant amount. So just know that we're going to try to give you the largest grant we can um, as we're awarding the prizes. So I think that that's everything and we can take questions on that later on as well, or of course at, at any time between now and the giving day. Awesome. Alrighty. Okay, so we're gonna get into campaign strategy and just some different kind of tools available to you and different ideas as you start to get ready for the giving day. 
Um, so one of the biggest things since Give Local is a 24 hour event, the trick is really making the most um, of your kind of your day is to sustain your fundraising momentum. Um, and one of the great ways to do that and make sure your campaign is on track is to set what we call mini goals for your organization to help generate just like buzz and build excitement. Um, so you'll want to set your mini goals for kind of like certain hours of the day so you can keep people excited about the goals that you have for your organization and kind of keep working towards top prizes. Uh, like Jess was saying, you'll want to refer to the prizes and the grant opportunities that are available kind of when you're building your mini goals, um, focusing on different hours, like different power hours and stuff like that. Uh, but you can also, when you're setting many goals, kind of start thinking about non-monetary goals for your campaign, like if you want to, um, you know, secure more unique donors this year or have more peer-to-peer -peer fundraising, if you want to get your board more involved or secure sponsors or try a matching grant out for the first time. So you're going to, you want to start to think about all sorts of different types of goals, um, monetary and non-monetary for your organization. Uh, but really, these mini goals help sustain your momentum. They get people excited about helping you reach your goals. Uh, think about your overall fundraising goal, how much you want to raise for the day, how many donors you need to get each hour or section of the day to reach your goal. And then when you're kind of planning your strategy, you're going to want to make sure you keep in mind when your donors are most active and kind of adjust your hourly or section goals accordingly. So if you know there are certain times of the day that are going to be pretty slow for you, um, one strategy to kind of boost that time is utilizing a matching grant. You can kind of shake things up and get some more momentum on those slower moments. Um, all right, I see donations. Okay, so something else you can do to get your campaign rolling is asking for seed donations. Um, so these are pretty much donations from people in your organization's inner circle that pretty much break the ice with your donors. Um, they kind of help get the ball rolling. They're called seed donations because they make your donation number grow. Um, and basically, like it doesn't have to be a huge amount. It's just something nice, five, like five, ten dollars here, you know, to see in the bank. Um, people to ask would be board members, staff, people who are kind of high level leaders at your organization, uh, volunteers who work with you, anyone who is super engaged in your work. Um, but really just a little bit to get started so that other donors can see uh, it kind of breaks the ice for people to give. We find that to be super helpful. Um, getting into matching grants. So a great strategy for driving your donations on your giving day is securing a matching grant. Uh, it's If you're new to matching grants, it's basically a large donation your organization can use to bring in other smaller donations by offering it as a match. So for instance, if you have someone willing to give you kind of $1,000, or if you have a large donor who gives year over year in large amounts, you can instead of just having them donate as per usual, you can have them ask them if they can uh, use that as a matching grant. So you'll take their $1,000 and say to your other followers and donors, you know, between this hour and this hour, our donations will be matched by up to $1,000, which basically allows them to double their donation. Um, and that's a big incentive for donors. Uh, you can do a lot within the Mighty Cause Matches tool. They have the capability to set a cap for matching donations. So if someone, you know, comes up with like, you know, a large chunk of money, it's not going to take away your entire match all at once. It can kind of piecemeal it out a little bit so more donors get to celebrate with their matching uh, funds. So that's a cool tool. Um, your matching grant is basically just a large donation in the end, so you're going to want to pretty much follow the same process you would when you secure kind of a major gift. So we call it prospecting, cultivating, and asking. So consider asking people as prospects for matching grants who are your board members. Um, sometimes an individual board member is super happy to provide a matching grant, but one thing you'll also want to consider is asking your board to kind of work together to provide the match. Uh, if your board still has dues to pay or if they want to kind of pool together, you can use that money and turn it into one large matching grant. Um, consider your major gift donors, like I said, who have given in the past. Uh, you know, these are good prospects. It's a fun way for them to also kind of liven up their own donation. So instead of writing you a check, they're knowing that they're helping your organization grow and drive more donations. You can also give the donor extra recognition when they're promoting the match. Um, so you can give, you know, put the low, like if it's someone who has a company, you can put their logo in there. Um, so major gift donors who like a little shout out, some donors, you know your donors 
better than anyone. There are some people who love to be, you know, shouted out for what they're doing. So you can definitely make it fun, make it noticed, uh, and kind of a proactive way for them to get involved in like a more public way. Uh, or it can be more private if they're into that too. Um, and, you know, have them work on, show their philanthropy for your organization. Um, but right now in this stage, you're going to want to start making phone calls, set up your emails, start to kind of cultivate your prospects, let them know what you're doing, see how warm they are to the idea of providing a matching grant. And then kind of in the coming weeks, you'll make your ask, you'll finish up the details, um, get everything pinned down. Um, and just so you know, you can also have more than one running at the same time. So if you have a ton of great responses for your matches, you don't have to feel like you have to pick and choose from those. Um, so moving into promoting your matching grant. So your matching grant is a wonderful, huge marketing opportunity for your day of event. So in order to make the most of it, you're going to want to promote it. Um, the first step is going to your matching grant tool on your Give Local profile, and you're going to want to add it in there. There's, like I said, a ton of marketing tools built into the platform for your matching grant. Um, when you do have a matching grant live, a little sticker will show on your uh, organization profile showing that you have a live match. Um, and it'll get listed also on the Give Local site for the day of. We'll have a little tab. Um, so it's, it's in your best interest to try to get a matching grant. Um, so when you're setting up your match, just a note, you're going to want to make sure to include match value and page metrics is not checked within the match tool, setup tool. This allows your match to count towards your leaderboard total once it's met and not double count on your give local campaign. Um, if your match sponsors are willing to pay the match online, that's great. Their matching dollars will be included in your leaderboard totals. If your match sponsor would rather pay by check, that's also great. You can enter in the match amount as an offline donation once the system notifies you that the match has been met. Um, and then, of course, once the Community Foundation of New River Valley approves the offline donation, it'll reflect on your leaderboard totals. Um, and all this information that I'm saying is available on the site as well, so if you have any confusion. Um, but just note, once your match is closed, you can't go back and edit it. So you're just going to want to double check that your match is accurate uh, when you're setting it up. So as you're promoting your match, you'll want to add some information to your story, uh, especially if it's a big match, promote it on all of your social media channels, send out an email to all of your supporters and so on. Just let everyone know about the match. Um, a countdown is also really great. It adds urgency. So don't feel like, you know, you're overdoing your emails or your um, social media blasts. kind of, you're going to want to let people know, like, there's an hour left of our match. Like we have this much available, let all your friends know, just really urge them to make a donation during that time. Um, alrighty. So we're going to get into, um, donation management and reports. This is, there's a lot of information here, but I'm going to link all of these uh, support articles in the Give Local Toolkit. So you can kind of click each one of these um, and learn more about each one and how to kind of view the reports on your organization profile. Um, but the reports section is divided up into five areas. So we have your donations report, your offline donations, your recurring donations, um, a retention, donor retention report, and also, of course, your disbursements. Um, so kind of to give you a little more information about each one, your donations and your offline donations. So with Mighty House Donation Report, you're able to view the info associated with each of your donations made to your organization through uh, the platform. At the top of the report, you can filter. You can search for a particular donation or a set of donations. Um, the default display is only the last 30 days. So if you're not seeing something, you're going to want to change the date, the time period if needed. Um, additionally, you can filter by the campaign type, you can sort by donation type. Um, this is all of this stuff is just super useful kind of for accounting reconciliation, the segment out different types of donors for future appeals. Um, but we've really simplified the screen view of your donor data to show you the only like pretty much what we think is the most important information, but you can also download a full complete uh, CSV file to view all the fees, all the address information, all the custom questions if you have a custom question, um, and you can download that. So recurring donations, you also have the ability to manage recurring monthly donors, right, on Mighty Cause? Um, any recurring donations that have been created or listed in that section. You can also just like donations and offline donations, like I said, you can search by different kind of categories, um, status, active, canceled, uh, search by donor name and all of that. 
um, retention. So this section is going to allow you to export your list of unretained donors, send individual emails if you want, and much more. Um, at the top of the retention report, you can filter and create kind of a retention port that you need specifically. Uh, so you can, there's a ton of kind of capabilities in all of these. You also, of course, disbursements in the disbursements section, you can see all of your disbursements to date sent to your organization, the status of your disbursement, uh, the method of payment for your disbursement. Um, so take a minute when you're kind of on your organization profile and kind of click through and just see what all is available to you. And like I said, all of this will be linked in the toolkit. Um, all right, so I am going to touch a little bit on adding offline donations more specifically. Um, so, of course, one of the most important aspects of your online fundraising is being able to track and manage your donation information. So offline donations um, are added to pretty much show your fundraising success outside of the Mighty Cause platform. Uh, gifts made via cash or check during the giving period, June 1st to 22nd, they're going to count towards your organization's giving day total, provided that you enter those gifts into your organization's profile. Um, so in order to add your offline donation, you're going to select add offline donation in the top right corner of your, as you can see here, um, of the page. Um, and then when you're adding the offline donation, you'll just enter pretty much your standard key information, your donor's name, their email address, the source, how they gave, was it cash check, corporate match, etc. Uh, and at the top of your offline donations report, you can also search um, more specifically, like I said before. Um, uh, one thing to note, if you need to make any changes to an offline donation that you already kind of entered, you just have to delete the offline donation and you'll just have to kind of copy and create a new one. Uh, alrighty, so we're going to move into activating your ambassadors. Um, so your ambassadors are people who are usually in your organization's inner circle who can help boost your campaign. So pretty much those are, your, like I said, your board members, your volunteers, highly engaged uh, staff members, and so on. And using these ambassadors actually helps you kind of reach out of your list of existing supporters and kind of meet new people, meet and engage with new donors, new potential donors, people that you might not otherwise have access to. Um, so your ambassadors can help you in the simplest ways of sharing a link to your organization page with their social circle, have them add it to their Instagram, Facebook, wherever um, they get their social media, um, and just ask them to donate and help boost your campaign. If you have a board member, for instance, who is super well connected, this can be a really great boost um, and just, you know, really help them get involved with peer to peer fundraising, which we're going to talk a little bit more now. Um, so peer to peer fundraising, if you're brand new to it, it's a fundraising technique where you basically are asking your supporters to fundraise on behalf of your organization. So Mighty Cause, we actually set up super easy peer to peer fundraising kind of functionality. Um, like I said, it's a great way to attract new donors. Um, if you want to try peer to peer, you would just ask your ambassadors to set up a fundraising page for your organization on Mighty Cause for Give Local. Uh, it might sound like a big ask, but it's actually super fun. Uh, it's very engaging for your supporters. It allows them to really tell their own story about your organization, how they came to work with you, why your work is super important to them, why they care so much um, about you know, your organization on this big day. And it really doesn't distract or draw any attention away from your, own, from your campaign because all of these peer-to-peer -peer fundraisers are operating alongside your campaign. Um, reaching out to people that they know personally for donations. In most cases, these are their friends and colleagues and family, um, not typical people in your organization that might have access to, that you might have access to on a regular basis. Um, so for people like your board, volunteers and staff, this is a good way for them to get involved without just kind of being asked to give money. It's not your standard ask. It's, it's much more meaningful for some. Um, than making just a donation or sharing a link. It really gets, you know, if you really can dig a little deeper into your stewarding process of really building and sustaining relationships with your supporters. Um, and to help things make things really easy for you, they, you as an organization, as an admin for your organization, can go in and set up fundraising templates within your account. Um, super easy. You just pre-fill some images, pre-fill some talking points, some facts. You can put your logo in there. Um, you know, you can get these pretty much all set. So the way people are going to go in and do this 
you'll just send them to your organization profile on Give Local, and right underneath your logo, there are two buttons. One says donate and one says fundraise. You can just tell them to click fundraise and it will open up um, a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising page. Um, all right, so we're gonna move into team fundraising. So this is kind of the next step after individual peer-to-peer -peer fundraising. So if you get a ton of interest in peer-to-peer, -peer, or if you've done peer-to-peer -peer before and you wanna try something new, um, consider trying out team or event fundraising. Teams and events are really great for groups of people who wanna fundraise together. Like if your board is like, hey, let's do a team fundraising event, um, or companies, or if you have a large volunteer group and you wanna get them on a team, Teams and events are just a really great way to get people kind of working together to get them excited. This is a really great way to get people excited about the giving day and feel more connected. Um, you can also inspire some friendly competition to keep them motivated. Uh, but basically the difference between teams and events is that an event allows individuals and groups of people, so individuals and teams to participate, uh, while a team fundraiser is a group of the individual fundraising pages kind of working towards a collective goal. Um, but the cool thing about using our Teams or Events products uh, for the Giving Day is that there's tools built in to make managing it super easy. Um, for instance, you can create like a template fundraiser, like I said, uh, pre-fill a bunch of stuff, make it super easy. Um, and then, of course, uh, it's just a really great option to get a lot of people willing to fundraise for you and peer-to-peer. -peer. And if you kind of like as we're talking about goals for your campaign, um, non-monetary, this is just a super great one to kind of start thinking about if you haven't really kind of dipped your toes into peer-to-peer -to -peer or team fundraising yet. Um, alrighty, email strategy. So your email list is going to be one of your most important tools during Give Local NRV um, because emails are just a very direct line to your supporters. So unlike social media, you don't have to think about an algorithm or what time you're publishing or if who's seeing what, when, um, your emails are going to get right into people's inboxes and typically right into their hands on their phones. Um, so you're going to want to take a little bit of time to kind of start to think about your email strategy for the event. Um, in general, you want to keep your emails super short, simple, skimmable, uh, quick highlights. Most people read email on their phones, like I said, so you just want to be able to kind of have them quickly scroll to get to the point. Uh, and also people are much more likely to read your emails if they pertain directly to them. So one of our strategies um, is to kind of start to segment out your email list, which means sorting your donors into different groups. So you might have a donor group, um, you might have a segment in your email where you're like, uh, these are our donors who give on a regular basis. These are our one-time donors. These are people who have come to our place, um, you just our services, but haven't donated, or these are, you know, this is our board, this is our volunteers and so on. So you don't need to craft whole entire new emails to each of these groups, but you're gonna wanna tweak small things that you send out in these emails for each of these specific groups. Um, like we're saying, people read emails if they pertain to them. So by kind of rephrasing and restructuring the, your language on these emails makes them more personal. Um, for instance, if you email your volunteers, you're going to want to definitely acknowledge that they already help your organization. Uh, you wouldn't want to just send an email saying, please donate to us. You know, you want to acknowledge what they already contribute and then ask them for a gift. Um, and then you don't also want to send a generic email to your full list asking for just a $25 donation, $25 donation if you have large major gift donors in there. Um, you'll want to send them something a little different, asking, you know, encouraging them to re-give uh, in their large amounts. So when you're creating these segments, you're going to first want to identify what they are and then kind of figure out how to tailor your specific message to each one. Um, uh, yeah, so they'll be more likely to read it. So pretty much um, how you segment depends on the program that you're using. Most services, Constant Contact, MailChimp, um, they use different tags and it's pretty, pretty easy uh, to get segments kind of going. Um, and then, of course, one thing you'll want to pay close attention to is the timing of your emails. Um, I recommend taking the time to pre-schedule as much as you can beforehand 
So you have plenty of time right now. Um, start creating your templates, start queuing up emails so that they're ready to go on the day of, um, or even you know early giving emails, uh, asking you for whatever you need, whatever it is, whatever your goals are, kind of trying to start to get everyone aware you don't want to wait till the day of to make your, you know, to let everyone know that you're participating and give local. Um, so I don't want to talk too much, but if you are looking and you're like, we did this last year, our email strategy is pretty tight. One thing you can do, and I recommend people, um, organizations kind of work on this strategy throughout the year. You do still have time to do this, of course, but, um, and that's what we call AB testing. So especially if it's pretty much when you send out two of the same emails um, and you change one variable. So you're sending one email in two different formats to the same group. So you might send an email to your volunteers. You have two different emails. Maybe you're testing a button color um, with a donate button or a subject headline and you're using emojis in one but not the other. And you're really trying to see which email gets the best response, gets the best engagement, the, best, the most clicks. Um, and you can take that information and you can apply it to your strategy on, you know, give local. So if you're like, oh, we sent out, you know, two A-B testing emails to our, um, our staff and they really responded well to a blue donate button rather than green, surprise, you know, stuff like that. Um, that's stuff that you can really kind of implement and make sure you're getting the best engagement on such a big day like Give Local. Um, and then, of course, your call to actions on your emails should be super clear and action oriented. So saying something like give now, donate now, help us today. You don't want to be passive. Nothing like please consider donating. You want it to be strong, um, confident. Give now. Today's the day. Um, already our social media strategy social media is a finicky beast isn't it um, but for a high stakes kind of day like give local we really recommend staying in your comfort zone so go where your audience is when it comes to your social media strategy uh, basically if you've never used TikTok, if you're not a big instagram person don't feel like you have to create one all of a sudden if you have followers on facebook or if you have followers on twitter Go where they are, put your effort into the platform where you're most likely to reach the people and have a large impact. Um, and again, a lot of the strategy really comes back to pre scheduling. So I definitely recommend scheduling any posts you can ahead of time just to save yourself the headache, the trouble, the chaos during the actual giving day and, and the week kind of like leading up to it. Just take your time, get your key content schedule. Uh, most of these social apps, Facebook, um, kind of Instagram, all sorts of there's just a ton of different applications available to you to pre schedule uh, your content um, or save them on your phone, you know, so you can copy paste on the day of if you don't want to spend money on a creator tool. Um, and then you can spend most of your time live posting on the stuff that really matters on the day of like real time thinking of donors. Um, real time updating on your progress, letting them know like hey we had this goal to reach you know, a certain number of donors or to, to get the most donations during this power hour, let them know your real time uh, kind of progress. Um, so yeah, we also think it's super helpful if you assign someone on your team to social media for the event. If you have a trusted volunteer, a board member who wants to chip in in some way, someone who you trust that can kind of monitor your social media, they can quickly respond to comments and engage with different followers, um, that's super helpful. And then if possible, we also recommend, you know, budgeting a tiny amount of money to boost some of your social posts or your tweets. If you're, uh, if you have the capacity and you're able to do that, um, $10, $20 for the day of for an ad, or if you want to start promoting that you're participating a couple days before, that can really go a long way. Um, and then you can also kind of start thinking about your strategy as well, like how to target your ads. Uh, you can target, you can choose who you target with those paid ads, like um, people who follow you if you only want that to be your audience or people who care about the cause that you support. Um, but in terms of type of content that does really well on social media, it really depends a little bit on the platform, but in general, photos, um, especially videos right now, do really well. 
So start considering, you know, doing something out of the box. Maybe you want to get your toes wet with a little 30 second or a minute live stream on Instagram, just showing the excitement and the enthusiasm that you all have on the day of the event. Um, but yeah, social media, that is a, that's an exciting one, but definitely a lot of work. So if you're able to find a volunteer to help you out with it, definitely recommend. Uh, okay, and so moving into giving day follow up, we are almost through. Finally, when you're planning your campaign, your follow up is going to be super important to keep in mind. Um, when you're kind of planning your content, you'll also want to plan your thank yous to your donors. Things like a little video from your staff or sharing a photo of your staff um, can be really great for this. So be sure to talk about the impact of the funds you raise, kind of close that loop on your campaign. That means if like you were raising for something super specific, like a new piece of equipment, improvements to your building, anything like that, you'll want to let them know the update um, and just send periodic emails as you continue updating on the progress. Um, also, this is a great opportunity to put in place an onboarding plan for new donors because you will likely get some new donors, especially if you're using peer to peer fundraising. Um, you're going to want to collect email addresses, you can create a welcome packet, you can send them some snail mail, you can have volunteers put together thank you notes. There's just a ton of different cool creative ways to kind of thank donors who have given. Um, and then, of course, at the very end, you're going to want to get support for Give Local. So the Give Local NRV team is available to you, Mighty Cause, our support team is here for you every day. Monday to Friday, 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern on the giving event. We'll be here for the entire time. Um, we have a full support library available to you in the nonprofit toolkit under the resources tab on the Give Local NRV site. Um, if you have any technical questions, if you're like one of my donors needs a receipt resent, we can help you with that. Um, just literally anything you want, you can throw it our way and we're happy to help you out. Uh, all right, that was a lot of info, so I am impressed that most all of you stuck around, so thank you. Um, I'm going to open the floor to any questions. I see we have two, uh, but if there's anything, Jess, Laura, Lindsay, if you all want to say at this time, you can do that as well. Um, I, I can add in, and, and I actually took a look at the, the questions. I, I cheated and looked at the two questions okay. that were asked okay. already, so I can answer those. Um, but I did I did uh, just want to note for folks that um, tomorrow morning for our monthly nonprofit listening session, um, we are, are have a panel discussion with organizations that um, have used some of these different tools successfully um, in the past. And so I just put into the chat the link to register for that. It's at 9 a.m. And that's going to be a chance to see how some different organizations with different staff and volunteer capacity um, last year utilized some of these different strategies to be able to secure a giving day grant. So you can, because because this is a lot of information today, and you may think, okay, well, I don't know if I can do that. Um, this will give you a chance to see how it was done by some of your colleagues in the region. Um, and then the, the two questions in the chat um, related to the, the match and offline giving, and I think we answered the question already that your match donation can absolutely be an offline gift, so a check um, from a major donor is just fine. You will just need to enter that in as an offline gift once your match has been secured. For the approval process that we referred to, um, through Mighty Causes System, the Community Foundation needs to approve every offline gift that comes in. So for any um, gifts that come in that are below $1,000, those are kind of auto approved. Those happen very, very quickly. For gifts that are $1,000 and above, our staff just takes a closer look for the approval of those. Again, this whole process happens very quickly. You're going to get your offline gifts approved within the giving day. Um, but just to know that particularly for larger scale gifts, please don't enter it in as an offline gift at 1158 PM because you have to give us a chance to make sure that we can approve it and it, and it shows up on your page. The reason we ask for approvals um, and, and particularly want to see those larger scale um, contributions is because oftentimes some of these large offline gifts um, are what make you the winner of a particular um, grant. 
And so we ask that any offline contribution you receive, um, particularly those ones $1,000 and above, that you keep documentation of that. So have a copy of the check. Um, make sure that you know if somebody was going to give stock to your organization, that you've got the email that says, I am giving this stock for give local NRV, because we reserve the right to ask you for proof of that contribution before we will um, officially name all the grant winners. We know that all of you on this call are very honest and would never ever work the system. However, um, we want to make sure that you're not taking, you know, a check that a ten thousand dollar check that you 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 know feel pretty good is going to come in in December of 2022 and say, you know, I think I'm just going to make this an offline gift so that I can get this grant. We want to make sure that it really is um, affiliated with Give Local. Um, so those will be approved in the system. And again, just keep that documentation. Um, and all of these rules are outlined on the, um, on the grants and prizes page of the Give Local site as well. Awesome. Anyone else have questions? You can submit those. Um, and then one thing I also love, want to let all of you know um, is just kind of, this is a lot of information. So when you're kind of planning your goals, like don't get, you know, overwhelmed, kind of pick and choose things that you want to work towards. If you want to try to really focus on peer to peer fundraising this year, um, if you want to try to get matches, uh, if you want to try to focus on getting a stronger kind of email support kind of blast going out. Um, you don't have to do every single one of these suggestions, but these are there to kind of help you grow in the ways with your organization that you that are that work best for you. Um, so that's my little tidbit. And then, of course, all of these slides I'm going to upload to the toolkit for you, uh, so you can kind of come back through and look at and see what kind of is going to work best for you this year. And can I just add in? Um couple things, Sarah. Um, so in relation to the nonprofit listening session tomorrow morning, we do record those sessions and post them to our website. Um, obviously, it's always nice to have you there. So you are able to ask questions during the session. But if you can't attend, know that that will be up on the Community Foundation site. And then we will also put a link to that um, under the Give Local NRV nonprofit toolkit page. And then the um, other thing I wanted to say is one of the super cool things about Mighty Cause is um, if you are a data geek like me, you can really um, dig into what worked well for you in past years. So as we've been using this platform over time, we can like at the foundation compare what hour of the day we were getting the most contributions last year um, and think about, okay, what was our strategy or how might we wanna change our strategy? So I would definitely encourage you to look at um, the different metrics that are available for your site. And on the giving day, um, you'll be able to see like, okay, last year, you know, noon to one was a really good hour for us, but two to three wasn't. Um, and think about your strategy in relation to that. It's really helpful to have those kind of metrics and they build year over year so you can really make adjustments based on that data. Yeah, that's a good one. Alrighty, I don't see any other questions coming through. So I wanna just say thank you again to everyone for joining us today. Um, thank you to the Give Local NRV team. We're super excited for this year. I'm gonna upload the slides, upload the video. Um, and just remember, you can reach out to our support team, support at mightycause.com if you come into you know any type of situation where you need support. But thanks again to everyone and just happy fundraising this year. Thanks, Sarah. Thank you, everyone. Bye.